woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom woke up this morning with my mind stayed on freedom Walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on freedom. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on freedom. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on freedom. Singing and praying with my mind. Stayed on freedom. I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stayed on freedom. I'm singing and praying with my mind. Stayed on freedom. We come together today to remind one another to rest for a moment on the tender bounds of our life's growing edge, to resist a headlong tumble into the next moment until we can claim for ourselves awareness and gratitude, taking the time to call to mind the faces of those we call neighbor, the faces of those we call beloved, to see in them the spark of the divine, to see their communion, the reflection of our own spark. May these moments of joy and sorrow, laughter and silence, memory and hope, be blessed by the mingling of our spirits across ether and across time. Come, let us worship together. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Los Alamos, and welcome to this video worship for Sunday, April 19th. Welcome here into our homes. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes. And a special welcome this morning to any one of you who is coming to us for the first time through these video services. I hope that the day is coming soon when we'll be able to meet you in person. In the meantime, if you have any questions about our community and what you experience in these worships, please visit us on the web at uulosalamos.org or email me your questions at revjohn at uulosalamos.org. But now it is time to begin our worship. Take a moment to create a sacred space for yourself. Clear out all your other distractions, close your browser tabs, turn off your telephone, feel your feet resting comfortably on the floor, feel yourself grounded. Light a candle for yourself if you have one. Breathe in. 
breathe out. And let us begin in silence. Let us enter now into a spirit of prayer and reflection. We begin by lighting a candle for all our joys this week, for everything that has lifted our hearts, for everything that has lightened our spirits, for everything that has brought us a smile or laughter. We light this candle. And we light a candle for all our sorrows this week, for everything that has broken our hearts, for everything that has weighed our spirits down, for every moment we have wept. We light this candle. The words of our prayer this morning come to us from my colleague Heather Ryan Starr. Eternal and beloved, gracious source of all life and all love, we come together today with gratitude for this time out of time, which we are setting apart for ourselves so that we might become more fully present to our own souls, to the souls of others, to that which we name as holy. May our joys be celebrated together, our wounds be healed together, our hearts be opened together. Spirit, may I move gently through this cloudy, murky, gray time. May I remember that today is just one day, and that showing up is at least half of what is asked of me. May I set aside my underlying anxiety that I will not get to everything, and put my trust and faith into the riverbank of human community. We are working together. I am not alone. There is a love holding me that is unconcerned with my day's to-do list and more concerned with my spirit's survival, even its thriving in this beautiful, challenging world. May we all remember that Rome was not built in a day, that our efforts are part of an ongoing stream of efforts, of lives being lived beside one another, shoring up this world. May what little I do today be for the greater good. May I be gentle with others today, as I long for others to be gentle with me. All this we pray in the names of those known and unknown, present and absent, remembered and forgotten, in the names of all the helpers of humankind. Amen. Hey guys, Tina here. And today we're going to talk about feeling all our feelings. I've been feeling all the feels this week. So today I'm going to talk about it with you guys and maybe you guys can help me and maybe I can help you with your feels and all your feelings that you've been feeling. And 
I have my friends here to help me because sometimes it's a little scary to talk about our feelings with other people. So these guys give me courage to talk about all the feels that I'm feeling and what I should do with those feelings. Because sometimes I don't know, but we're going to talk about it. Maybe brainstorm, think of some ways that we can help ourselves when we're feeling all the feels. So one emotion or feeling that I've been feeling this week is anger. I've been feeling some anger this week. That's just one of my feelings. So what do I do when I'm feeling angry? When my chest, my chest gets all tight and I feel like the anger is gonna eat me alive. So what do I do with that? My hands get all tight and sometimes my neck hurts when I'm feeling angry. So what am I supposed to do with my anger? Hmm. What do you guys do with your anger emotion? One thing that I know I can do is I can stop. S-T-O-P. Stop. So when I'm feeling angry, I literally stop like the stop sign tells me to do. With the S, I stop. And then with the T, I take a deep breath. <sighs> hmm, that helps. And then I observe. What does observe mean? That means to, to, to think about what I'm feeling. So why am I feeling angry? Hmm. So I think about and I observe why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. Yep. Maybe I'll talk to somebody like an adult or a sibling or someone or a friend about why I'm feeling angry. And then after that, I proceed. I move forward. It's like stopping at a stop sign. We stop and we pause and then we move forward. So the P is means proceed which means to move forward. Proceed mindfully. Mind, use our minds to proceed forward and think about why we're angry. So stop when we're angry. Stop, take a deep breath, observe, and proceed mindfully and move forward. So that's one way. What are some ways that you guys can think of when you are angry? What do you do? Do you talk to an adult? Do you talk to a friend, a family member, a pet? Do you draw? Another feeling I've been feeling this week is fear and being scared and a little anxious, a little nervous about the future. Things are very uncertain and I don't know what's gonna happen. So I've been a little fearful and scared. And so what do I do when I'm feeling fearful and scared? Hmm, what do you do when you're fe feeling fearful and scared, and nervous and anxious? Hmm, maybe I cuddle up with something, right? Maybe I go to my parents' bed. Sometimes I do that. I remember doing that when I was a kid. But our fear and our scared tells us to slow down. Maybe we just need to take a few deep breaths, like when we are angry. Maybe we need a hug. Sometimes I need a hug, right? So maybe we just have to slow down, talk about our feelings with somebody, right? So when we're fearful and scared, we can slow down. <gasps> what about when I'm feeling really sad? Which I was actually feeling today. I was feeling a little sad. So what can I do? 
What do you guys do when you're feeling sad? Hmm. Well, sometimes I feel like I want to cuddle up with my stuffies and lay down and curl up. Maybe my sadness is telling me to take a rest. Maybe I need to take a nap. So when I'm feeling sad, sometimes I let some tears out. Maybe I listen to some music. Maybe I just want to lay down and go to sleep. And that's okay. Yep. Curl up with my pet. Stuffies. Maybe ask for a hug. Maybe talk about it with somebody. What do you do when you're sad? What do you do when you are happy? Oh my gosh. When I'm happy, I want to do all the things. It's so awesome. Everything is awesome. Right? And I want to go. I want to go. I want to do things. I want to build things. I want to play outside. I want to play with my friends or family. I want to play with my pets. I want to go explore. I want to go hiking. I want to do fun things, right? When I'm happy. Make jokes. I don't know. I like to do fun things. Maybe watch a fun movie. Sing some songs. Do some art. So I like to go. But then I also like to give my happiness away to other people who might not be feeling as happy. So sometimes I want to bake some food for them. Maybe I'll write them a note. Do something like that for somebody when I'm feeling happy. Because I want to make them happy too. Right? So, what do you do when you're happy? Hmm. So those are all the feels that I've been feeling this week. Those are some things I like to do with my feelings. But there's also some other things that you guys can do on a weekly basis with your adults in your house, maybe. And maybe this will help your adults, too. And maybe you guys can talk about all the feels that you're feeling. Because I know our adults are feeling some feels, too. Right, adults? <laughs> so I'm emailing this little chart to your guys' parents. And you can use it to write down or draw your emotions each day. So you can you can write down all of your feelings and keep track of what you're feeling. All the feels. Because all the feels are okay. Your feelings are okay. They're always okay. So I'm going to email that. And then another thing you can do is I'm going to email these little things that you can hang on your door. Like... When you're feeling happy, you can hang this on your door. It says, yay, you're here. Come on in. So if you're feeling happy, you might want to hang this. Or if you feel a little scared, you might want to hang this one. Proceed with caution. So you can hang that one up when you're feeling a little nervous or scared. Or when you're feeling a little sad. You could hang this one on your door. Give me a moment or two. You could hang that one. Or if you're feeling super angry, you could hang this one on your door. It says, enter at your own risk. Yep. Or if you're feeling kind of messy and disorganized, maybe you can't think straight, I don't know. This one you could hang, and it says, this room's a mess. Yuck. So, I'm going to email these to your parents, too. You can make them this week. You can cut them out. Use them as your door. Hang them on your door. And then talk about all the feels with your adults or your siblings in your house. Right? And you could even make these little signs to hang up when you're feeling happy, when you're feeling angry. When you're feeling fearful, and when you just are feeling a little sad and need some rest. So you can make these signs this week too and hang them up when you're feeling all the feels. 
So those are some things you can do. And maybe we can help each other out and help our adults out, right? Yeah, and our siblings when we're feeling all the feels. Well, it was really good talking to you. And we'll see you next week, next time. Peace, love, and happiness. Our reading today comes from Teresa Soto, a meditation entitled, Now I Love You, Now I Witness. I know sometimes you get cranky, and sometimes your tea gets cold before you can drink it. Sometimes the news is too much. The resistance seems too little. That's real. But we are here imperfect and together and reaching. You can hold my hand if you want. I washed it with soap. It's okay. In this kind of time, now is better than later. Now I love you. Now I am sorry it hurts. Now I witness your struggle and mine. Sometimes one answer is to be a yes in the face of every no. I am a yes for you, now and again, later if you need me. Ironically, the theme for April is liberation. And here we are in our homes, abiding by the public health order to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Do we feel liberated? Maybe not, probably not. We may even feel trapped. As one frustrated friend exclaimed, imprisoned in our own homes. Deep breath. Deep cleansing breaths. Step back. Find that calm center. Let go of anxious thoughts. I recently had an email exchange with a friend who is a psychologist. Being concerned about our mental well-being and our health during this COVID-19 crisis, I asked her if she had some pearls of wisdom to help us with what we're facing. She mentioned some familiar coping strategies, maintaining a routine and schedule, eating a healthy diet, exercising consistently, getting enough rest and sleep, limiting the amount of news we watch, and having a time of quietness, of meditation each day. These and other positive strategies can help free us, liberate us when we feel trapped in this time of high anxiety. Ah, 
anxiety, the feeling of worry, unease, nervousness, typically about an imminent threat, danger, or event, something with an uncertain outcome. That describes the pandemic, doesn't it? So it's no wonder that we may be experiencing anxiety and feeling anything but liberated right now. When my psychologist friend mentioned ambient anxiety, I began to think of what that means. We are encompassed in an atmosphere of anxiety because so many of us are anxious and understandably so. This ambient anxiety is negative energy, almost literally hanging in the air. We sense it when we are in the grocery store and it seems like shoppers, ourselves included, are wearing blinders that we want to move as quickly as possible to get our items and get out of the store. When we frantically search the almost empty shelves that were once stocked with items we took for granted. When someone isn't wearing a face covering and coughs without covering their mouth. We feel it when others don't maintain social distancing and we must physically move aside to do so. When the nightly news coverage approaches the apocalyptic when we hear stories of struggle, hardship, loss, sacrifice, and sometimes live out these stories ourselves. We know anxiety and ambient anxiety. All of us together are seeking to process this sudden painful disruption in our lives one that continues to impact us in ways we could not have imagined just weeks ago. Deep breath. Many deep cleansing breaths. Stepping back, finding that calm, quiet center, releasing anxious thoughts. So April's theme, liberation, almost seems laughable on the surface, doesn't it? But in looking beneath that surface, I have found some glimmering moments of liberation in bird song and in human song, in the blooming of daffodils, in the emergence of chipmunks, lizards, and butterflies, in that tiny bee sipping sweet nectar from a dandelion blossom, in the smiling eyes of a masked cashier in Smith, in caring words and actions of others, in the unexpected snuggles initiated by my border collie, in the most unanticipated time out that offers freedom to be more fully present in the moment. These are precious life-sustaining liberating gifts, ones that could easily go unnoticed. In this next week, I invite you to look each day for the gifts that await you. They are there for each of us to discover, even in this profoundly uncertain and anxious time.
I've taken you all through this meditation before, but I want to begin again while you are in your home. Sit comfortably, feel your feet planted firmly on the ground, feel the weight of gravity connecting you to the earth. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe naturally. Take a finger or two and touch them to the inside of your wrist. Touch them to where you can feel your pulse under the skin of your wrist. Focus on the sensations underneath your fingertips. Feel that pulse moving. Feel the flow of life moving through you. Notice its pressure. Breathe in, breathe out. And now change your focus to your wrist, feeling your fingertips on it. Notice yourself observing your pulse. Become aware of yourself touching and being touched in this moment feeling life coursing through you. I need to do this meditation for myself at least once a day. Lately, twice, maybe three times, to take that pause for myself, to remind myself that I am not just a creature who responds to life but that I am capable of observing how I respond, observing how I analyze my life, that I am not just reactive, but participating in my life. I need that reminder several times a day now, exactly. Nyla talked to us about the ambient anxiety of the times, and I know I am swimming in that atmosphere right now. That anxiety soaks into me right now. And when I let it soak into me too deeply, I start to fool myself into believing that I am nothing more than a bundle of nerves responding to all the stimuli around me, like a single-celled creature. Last week, I talked about the grief and the trauma we are all going through in some way or another right now, about the small deaths of our spirits that we experience in this time. Because we grow out of touch with ourselves and don't know how to process all that is happening. And I said that trauma experts tell us it could take years for us to really process at any deep level what it is we have been going through and what we have been feeling in these times. Because we are out of touch with ourselves. But even though the deep processing might take years, there are still ways for us to get back in touch with the essentials of ourselves to be mindful in the moment when we are going through deep emotions. There is time for us to practice the skills of emotional intelligence, our EQ skills. When we can do this, these are the first steps in managing our emotional life, in participating in it again when it feels like we cannot process. If we can practice our emotional intelligence skills, it lessens the impact that those deep and strong emotions might have on our spirit, might mitigate some of that small death we are feeling in those moments. If we can practice these skills, it gives us a chance to be in control of our emotional lives rather than letting our emotions have control over us. It lets us control rather than being controlled. And so how do we begin? We begin with that pause, that reminder that we are both observed and observer, active and not just reactive in our own lives. 
And when we have settled into that pause, when we can feel the beginning of a connection to our own self again, we start by giving a name to the emotion that we are feeling. Sounds simple, almost ridiculously simple. Why even bring it up in a sermon? And yet it's not so easy to do, to name what we are feeling. We don't like to talk about our emotions. When we are feeling something strongly, we don't want to bother others talking about what we are feeling. We don't want to bother ourselves with giving a name to it. Earlier this week in my midweek message, people were asking how I was doing, and I said I felt sad. A simple sentence, three words, a simple three-letter emotion, and yet it took a lot for me to put that down on paper, both for myself to see spelled out and to see show to all of you. I feel sad. It took a lot of energy to give that a name and to know that was what I was feeling. But when we can do that, when we can give what we are feeling a name, it starts to give us back some control of our own lives. Names have power, and to give something a name gives you power over it, gives us some power to live within all the strength and the flow of the emotions that we are feeling. It allows us to speak our needs as we feel them, both what we need from ourselves and what we might need from others in the moment that we are feeling something strongly. To name our emotions is a chance to awaken ourselves to the reality of the present moment we are living with and claim some agency over it. Remember who you are. Remember the fullness of who you are. Active and not just reactive. Observing and observed. Feel the connection to your own self. And now that you have named that emotion you are feeling, or the range of emotions you may be feeling, now is your chance to treat that emotion that is part of your life and treat your whole self feeling that emotion with some sense of compassion. We talk a lot about compassion for others, but not so much about compassion for ourselves, and that is really where the sense of compassion needs to begin. We need to treat ourselves with a sense of compassion of being with ourselves in the moments of our deepest suffering. Because when we can do that, we start to behave in a countercultural way. There is a cultural aversion to naming and expressing, especially the negative emotions we might be feeling, our anger, our sorrow. That same sense that we don't want to bother people or burden people with what we are feeling convinces us that we need to bottle up everything and not name it, especially not name it out loud, especially when they're deep and heavy, sad emotions, your sadness, your sorrow, your anxiety, your anger, your outrage. Our culture does not want us to express these. And even now, in troubling times, when we feel a positive emotion, when we might feel joy, when we might feel called to laugh at something, when we just have a moment of clarity and sunshine breaking into our lives, we feel at times a sense of guilt about feeling positive when there is so much suffering around us. We are in a moment when no emotion feels like the safe choice. When no name to any emotion feels like a safe name. 
because there feels like there is no safety in naming what we are feeling and expressing that out loud, we judge ourselves instead harshly. We get down on ourselves for feeling anything at all, and especially now, especially as we engage with others across social media, which gives this illusory buffer to how we treat one another. Especially now, the emotional border guards are out in full force, telling us what we do and do not have the right to feel right now. Especially if we dare to express an emotion that somehow counters or is different what from others may be feeling. The gatekeepers don't want us to feel. And because of this, too often, we need permission to feel. We need permission to express our emotions. But once you have named it, and once you have gotten back in touch, begun to get back in touch with who you are, it is time to let go of that judgment, both your own and what the emotional border guards might be telling you you can and cannot feel. Let go of the judgment you might feel and treat yourself with some compassion. Give yourself that permission to feel fully and freely what you are feeling right now. And if you cannot give yourself that permission, if you need to hear it coming from outside your own self, then hear it from me today. You have permission to feel what you are feeling and to feel it freely and deeply. Allow yourself to feel what you are feeling freely and with apologies to no one. If we can name the emotions we are feeling, if we can feel them without any shame, then we have a chance to ride out the swell of the wave of those deep, overshadowing emotions. To ride them until they flatten out. And then we get a head start on the deeper processing when the time for that deep understanding has arrived. Remember who you are. Remember the fullness of who you are, observing and observed, participant and not just reactant. Once we have named those emotions, once we have ridden out the crests of those waves of the big emotions, then we have a chance to approach our emotional life with some curiosity once the depth of the moment has passed. Why did I feel that? What triggered that feeling within me? What exactly is it I am responding to in that moment that makes me feel something so deeply, so overwhelmingly? Living in and living through our emotional life, connected to ourselves with mindfulness, with compassion and with curiosity for things and for ourselves as we are. Living with it and through it gives us a chance to explore the nature of our relationship both to our own selves and to others and also to the environment and the systems we are living with and how they affect our emotional lives as well. And when we can do that, it gives us a sense of what we can and cannot control within all of those spheres. What I can control for myself, how I can control my part of the relationship with others, how I can control my participation in the environment and the systems that are intertwined with my own emotional life. Remember who you are. Remember the fullness of who you are, observing and observed. 
participating and not just reacting. This work of emotional intelligence, of emotional mindfulness, it takes some time and it takes some effort on our part. It takes the wherewithal to pause for that moment, to reconnect to the fullness of who we are. And it doesn't always happen in a linear flow. This is not a step-by-step -step process. There's no fixed time for each of those steps. The steps repeat. We go back to one or the other and they stretch over time. They take the time they need to take. It can be a meandering process, but it is a process that keeps us engaged with ourselves, keeps us connected to ourselves, gives us back, finally, some agency in our own emotional lives. To practice the skills of emotional intelligence leads us to be more beautifully more fully, more completely human. Remember who you are. Remember the fullness of who you are. And feel freely. Feel unapologetically. Feel with some curiosity. But feel. May it be so. Our offering partner for the month of April is the Juvenile Justice Advisory Board. Please use the link in the notes below or that you see here on the screen to visit them and make a direct donation in support of their programming for youth in Los Alamos County. May what you give bring you joy and into deeper relationship with this community. Love makes the world go round Love makes the world go round Somebody soon will love you If no one loves you now High in some silent sky Love sings a silver song Making the earth whirl softly Love makes the world go round High in some silent sky Love sings a silver song Making the earth whirl softly Love makes the world go round Making the earth whirl softly Love makes the world go round. Friends, may life bless us and keep us. May the light of life shine upon us and out from within us and be gracious to us and bring us peace. For this is the day. This is the one wild and precious life we are given. So let us all find a way to rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace.